In today's video, we're going to check out the top 5 best point and shoot cameras in 2019. I made this list based on my personal opinion, and I tried to list them based on their price, quality, durability, and more. To see the price and find out more information about these cameras, you can check out the description below. Also, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the latest technology reviews. Okay, so let's get started with the video. At number 5, it's the Ricoh GR2. With mirrorless cameras becoming the standard, it's difficult to think that fascinating and unique products as compact cameras will ever attract attention. The Ricoh GR2, a camera that is something different and understated, will most certainly do so. A camera that will yield excellent results in the hands of pros and beginners alike. It's a camera that's very simple to use and very portable and lightweight. Ricoh GR2's design is quite interesting. It has a very understated design but also stands out from the crowd despite coming in black colour and no design features and accessories. It reminds you of the older mirrorless cameras because of its large and pronounced front grip and also the large number of manual controls. The camera is very light and portable. It definitely feels like it won't cause discomfort even after long periods of use. Because of its shape and weight, it's easy to securely grip the camera and in the case of a drop, the build quality shines showing us that using premium materials really matters. The camera may be pretty light, but it is substantial. Searching for a point-and-shoot camera with a good sensor size is very difficult. The Ricoh GR2 has an APS-C sensor with a size of 23.7 by 15.7 mm, which is DSLR level, providing an amazing image quality. The Ricoh GR2 also has a relatively wide lens, which is perfect for shooting landscapes, architecture, portraits and street photography. The lens is 28mm with f2.8. It's a good focal length for most beginners. The Ricoh GR2 maybe does not have a high number of megapixels, but if you don't plan to print your pictures onto billboards, then 16 megapixels of a Ricoh GR2 is more than enough for you. The autofocus in daylight situations is quick. It's a very fun camera, very difficult to take a bad picture with it. The autofocus may suffer a little in low light conditions, but it's not a major issue. The Ricoh GR2 is beautiful and understated and looks like a toy camera from afar, but it really is a great tool that you just cannot take bad photographs with. At number 4, it's the Panasonic Lumix ZS100. A 1-inch sensor craze has engulfed the pocket camera market. Panasonic is looking to add a new proposition to the 1-inch sensor market with a Lumix ZS100 with a 10x zoom range. While it really is a good camera with quick autofocus and good macro capability, for some this might even be the perfect point-and-shoot camera. Given its lens, the camera is rather compact, which easily slides into your jacket pocket and is really pleasant to take pictures with. There's a ring around the lens that can be programmed to change settings depending on your needs. The ring is bigger than usual and more comfortable. The controls are very easy to feel and manipulate and don't take a long learning curve. Every button is very logically and intuitively positioned, providing easy control. It doesn't have a flip-up LCD, which is a shame because this camera takes pretty good selfies. Shooting photographs with a Panasonic Lumix ZS100 doesn't feel slow at all, and you won't miss shots because of unresponsive and slow autofocus or any kind of delays. Focusing and shooting in good light is done in about 0.1 seconds, but in low light it's close to 0.6, which is maybe a bit slow. It is recommended to set the focus yourself rather than activating the full autofocus mode, which is a little frustrating as most cameras will allow you to do that. The modes in this camera tend to choose the wrong settings, so it's better to manually adjust settings for better image quality and experience. The Panasonic Lumix ZS100 has provided good image quality, with a huge amount of vibrancy and punch, but natural as well, giving an impressive detail. The Lumix ZS100 competes strongly with other cameras that have a 1-inch type sensor. The Panasonic Lumix ZS100 unfortunately lacks in the lens department. It's a weaker cog in a well-oiled machine. The image sensor is very good and has a lot of features, but the lack of a good lens makes or breaks a camera. If it had a better lens, it would be a solid performing machine with great image quality. However, it cannot be said that the Panasonic Lumix ZS100 is a bad camera. It's actually a good one, just with a lacking feature. At number 3, it's the Canon PowerShot SX740HS. If you need a pocket-sized camera with enhanced zooming capabilities, then Canon's PowerShot SX740HS is made for you. With its simplicity, it'll amass beginners and casualists. 
but its semi-automatic and manual exposure controls will make shooting with this camera a joyful experience for enthusiasts. The PowerShot SX740HS is very small and portable and can be taken anywhere. It may not be as slim as a smartphone, but it'll easily fit into most pockets. It weighs just 290 grams with the battery and SD card installed. The whole body is built with metal and is pretty solid and sturdy, not showing weak spots anywhere. It also has a textured grip and thumb rest, providing a good secure grip to the camera. Especially for its price point, this camera is excellently built and designed. The price you have to pay for the 40 times optical zoom is the 0.3 inch small sensor with 20.3 megapixel CMOS chip. From a small dial of the camera top plate, you can choose from the various shooting modes. You can choose manual and semi-automatic modes as well, but unfortunately, you can't shoot in RAW format. Every button is placed on the right-hand side for single-handed shooting. The Canon PowerShot SX740HS has a tiltable screen which can be helpful while shooting photographs from difficult angles. It can also face all the way forward, providing a great tool for taking selfies. But the display is non-touch, a little of an odd choice, but it helps to keep the price down. Focusing is really quick and precise. Unfortunately, you cannot choose a specific focus point, although you can choose tracking AF or a center point. Its focus can track some slow and predictably moving objects. The image quality in well-lit environments and situations is very pleasant and satisfying, but there is a drop of detail in low light conditions and pictures become a little smeary. In good light conditions, the impression of detail is amazing, but it tends to drop down when using the 40 times optical zoom. It really is a fairly priced camera and a compact camera with good image quality, making it perfect for holidays and family gatherings. At number two, it's the Sony DSCW X220. If you don't need an advanced camera, but you're not sure about your smartphone's ability to take photographs, enter the Sony Cybershot DSCW X220 an ultra-portable pocket shooter with optical steady shot image stabilization, providing you with a sharp shot through the light and zoom range. With a justifiable price, it's a really good choice. The Cybershot is very thin and tiny. It can fit into any jeans pocket with ease. Even though it's pretty slim and tiny, it has a 10 times optical zoom, rather impressive for its size. There is no thumb rest or grip on the front of the camera due to its light weight though, you can easily get a secure grip. Because of its size, there are very few buttons on the camera, but there are more than enough for basic photography. Also, you can change the settings and choose modes. The camera even has a built-in Wi-Fi and NFC, which you can use to transfer your photographs and videos. With an inexpensive camera like this, often we don't expect top quality photos. However, the Sony DSCW X220 provides very good image quality. It's a top performer. It packs an 18.2 megapixel sensor that captures a good amount of detail. Looking at the pictures, the image does reveal that some image smoothing is done in some areas, but it's not unexpected at this price point. In high ISO, it's quite good, and loss of detail and amount of noise is expected for its category. The colors are quite bright and vibrant, as it's always expected from Sony. The camera's metering system does an excellent job of producing balanced exposures. It generally produces true and accurate colors. The 10 times optical zoom is pretty good, actually, and Sony's optical image stabilization does a great job, providing a steady shot. There is a general belief that the smaller the camera, the lower its image quality. It may be true, but the Sony DSCW X220 does an amazing job for its category with good detail, vibrant colors, and low noise levels. If you need a camera to be compact while also not losing performance, then the Sony DSCW X220 is a fine option for you. And at number one, it's the Fujifilm X100F. Fujifilm's X100 series has always been classed as the best compact digital camera system. But with the introduction of Fujifilm's X100F, which is just as powerful as the flagship cameras, the compact has never been better. Taking the crown by being the sharpest looking, best performing and one of the most portable in the compact camera, the X100 is the best. Mr. Masazumi Imai and his design team have stayed true to the original concept of the X100, keeping the industrial design that so many photographers love. The Fujifilm X100F has a very streamlined design, in fact it looks like a smaller and refined version of the X-Pro2. The screen is on the far left and the controls are all on the right hand side, giving you a one-hand operation. 
It's really cleaned up from the last iterations too. The whole body is metal and it looks very premium and refined. In hand, the camera feels light but substantial, solid all round. It really makes sense. Every aspect of the design is great. The Fujifilm X100F has provided amazing image quality. Fujifilm has included film simulation modes in the camera, such as Acros black and white mode. The film simulation mode has provided pictures with extraordinary depth and real intensity. For retaining delicate highlight details, Fujifilm's dynamic range expansion modes were pretty effective too. The 23mm f2 lens is not as impressive as expected and some shots have appeared a little murky, but this is the fastest camera in the series, allowing you for great spontaneous shots. One of the best cameras for street photography and portraits, skin tones are gorgeous. There may be a lot of other cameras that you can get with higher specs and lower prices, but the shooting experience that the Fujifilm X100F gives is not comparable to any other camera. It's a very fascinating camera to shoot with, especially if you've used traditional film cameras before digital. The price is very expensive. However, what we came to know was that the Fujifilm cameras hold their factory price value for many, many years. With a wonderful concept and great styling, waking a sense of nostalgia in your guts, the Fujifilm X100F is the best point and shoot that money can buy. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions related to these products, you can leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.